This is the Doctor continuing the Battle Brothers playthrough. I adjusted uh, my music a little bit more. Hopefully, this, uh, the volume is better now. So this run has been going incredibly well so far. The luck I've had early game is insane. In fact, I think you'd be hard pressed to find uh, luck that's better, both in terms of our battles. Look at all the stuff we've looted from the bandit raiders. I have like all my frontliners have raider level gear by day nine. I've never had that before. Plus our recruits are for the most part pretty good. Um, including some real superstars here towards men. The brawler of athletic and stars in defense is an insanely good character. Um, so yeah, this is going really well. Um, I, before this video was recorded, I started planning out how I wanted to build some of these characters. I actually made a little spreadsheet, um, and you know, you don't have to like make spreadsheets or anything. Don't think that you have to do this to, uh, do well in this game, but I just personally like to do that. So for Erwin here, uh, some range defense is not necessarily bad when you max roll, but we want melee skill and... Health and Fatigue, I think, would do very well on Erwin. Uh, we could definitely use a bit more Fatigue, even uh, though he has really good Fatigue to start with. And he has uh, Colossus, so those four hit points are effectively five hit points. Um, uh, Erwin is going to be sort of a tanky character because he has no stars in melee. I actually think he's not going to really be super accurate. Uh, like, look at the difference between a character like Torkoal and Erwin. Right now it's an 8 difference, but that is only going to grow even bigger. So I feel like fast ad adaptation will work well for him. Torlith um, has very poor fatigue, but plus 2 is not a great roll. I was going to make this character into uh, an initiative user, a duelist type. And you don't necessarily need that much fatigue. You still need a bit more than this. But with how poor that row is, I'm going to up, uh, and how good the melee defense row was, I'm going to up those. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and begin taking dodge on this character. Uh, he has semi-heavy armor. I try to give him the, like, the lightest type of male armor. Uh, we could potentially go lighter as the game go on. And eventually, we'll want to take the shield off. Shield contributes quite a bit to fatigue and initiative penalty, but the defense bonus is too good right now to not have a shield. And Thor's men is our super soldier brother. He is going to become a two-hander. Uh, so melee skill, very important. Melee defense, very important. And when you get a plus four rolling fatigue, you take that. Two-handers. Um, Recover is very good. You could also potentially take advantage of Adrenaline, but I just want to beeline straight for the best perks. So I'm going to go with Student. And the critical perks are like Brawny, Sword Mastery, Reach Advantage, Battle Forge, Underdog. Once you have that combination, uh, your character should be good to go. So that looks good. Let's check out the town a bit more. Right, this is the odd town with the ambush trade route and well supply. They don't cancel each other out, apparently. Uh, a little odd. My selling prices are not the best, but they're okay. Buying price is also not the best. Um, and there are no structures here. There is, however, a hunter, and we want a hunter. Also, another wild man. Those are actually, like, generally pretty good backgrounds. But we definitely need another hunter, so let's get another range character. This guy has a hunting bow to start with. That's very good. Let's check him out. It's an interesting character. Um, he does have 57 range defense, so he doesn't have stars in initiative, range, attack, or range defense, which are the most important perks in my mind. He actually has two stars in melee defense, which is probably not going to come in use. Um, his resolve is also not great. So this is quite a mediocre hunter. But mediocre hunters are still good to keep around. So I'll just give him, I'll give my best archer the hunting bow, of course. Uh, Hugo, his resolve is so bad, actually. Um, 
so... Yeah, he's not entirely without faults, all right? I'm just reading his background. I wonder if the text sometimes, like, gives you some clues about his traits. I don't think so. I think it's just random. I might be wrong. Uh, anyway, we need to give him a backup weapon. Um, what's a good backup weapon? I don't really have any weapons. You can have a spear. Why not? Hopefully we get some better range recruits. Even though he doesn't have stars in all the uh, best perks, he's still really good. Like, getting 57 base range skill at level 1 is phenomenal. Gunthrim here is level 3 and he only has uh, 60 range skill. Hunters make really good bow users. Um, hunters and cell swords, I think, have the highest potential. And you're much more likely to get... A good range attacker with a hunter than cell sword, but I've had cell swords with uh, like 90 plus range attack fully leveled up. It's pretty insane. The tools here are really expensive, but I like to have at least some tools in my inventory. So we'll sell off this flail, buy the tools. We have enough money. Um, yeah, we have enough money to pay our men for a couple of days, so this should be fine. Let's head out to Henomark. Let's just go straight there. I guess the fastest way is, uh, it is apparently through some of the swamp. This, uh, town here, Gator Wall, you can't, uh, get quests or contracts there until you're a professional mercenary group. But we fulfilled that ambition of getting 12 men. Very good. Yes, I have enough payment for one more day. We're going to need to get a lot more contracts. Uh, places like Henomark will be really good. We want to build up our reputation with the towns nearby, do some trading, make some money that way. Kind of a shame that this area of the world does not have any cheap tools it looks like i don't see any workshops or like copper mines copper is also another potentially good trade uh, like a good trade good but they don't seem to exist here so if it, merchant from krakendorf is looking higher uh thieves stole your lockbox this is not a lot of crowns but i'll take the offer for 300 Let's just go ahead and do that first. Um, follows the track east. It looks like we go this way. These tracks are very large and deep, suggesting there could be quite a few bandits. But it's okay. We can beat quite a few bandits, as long as they're mostly thugs. Which, for 300 gold, you can kind of tell how difficult a contract is by the amount of gold you're getting paid. 300, not a lot. So thugs and poachers, I would actually not mind finding them at night. That would be totally okay with me. Yeah, let's repair the flail. Uh, some ca players like to carry a backup shield. I just don't find it necessary a lot of the times, and it does consume a bit of extra fatigue. So I might carry backup shields if it's a tough fight against raiders or something, but against thugs and poachers... There's no point. Let's go murder the thieves. You can control click on a group on the world map and you'll chase them. I think it's day now and we do have the range advantage. Uh, we have three characters or four if you count Thordsmen here and we can get some high ground on them. Seems to me that's exactly what we ought to do. They might charge us because they could perceive us to have the range advantage. Yep. Uh, this dog has a dagger. I would love a dagger. So let's analyze these enemies. Who's the most dangerous? The guy with the dagger and the guy with the flail are pretty dangerous. Could 
charge up, but then we wouldn't really take advantage of our archers. I actually like to hold and just shield wall all my men. Good. Nice javelin throw. Pierced hand. This guy is much less threatening. Do I go for a kill? Sure. No such luck. Let me throw his men onto the hill here so he'll be even more accurate. Bertram, you could move on to the high ground, but I don't really think that's necessary. I could actually loot this guy's armor. It's worth a slight amount more money. Just like use the flail and shoot him. On the other hand, he could actually like hurt us with his puncture. So maybe we just shoot him. Yeah. Um, should Bertram reload? I think so. A road can one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's spear wall. I'm not going to uh, shield wall because I just don't have enough fatigue. Let's sh yeah, shield wall up. Shield wall up. Shield wall up. Shield wall up. Do I spear wall? No, I want them to come in. The reason why I'm doing this is I have the range advantage, so why don't I just take advantage of that and devastate them with a couple of volleys? Yep. Very good. Got the daggers. Gonna pass, which is good. I have a short sword managed to hit Wolfram there for a bit of damage, but it's not really that bad. 41% uh, chance here. Sure. Huh, nice miss. Uh, yeah, the, these thugs are going to die pretty soon. Who's the more dangerous guy? Probably the guy with the flail. On the other hand, I have an 85% chance to hit the guy with the sword, so let's do that. One hit kill. Very good. Archers are shooting me, but missing. Poachers, honestly, not that dangerous. Um, let's move up and threaten the archers. Oh, okay, that thug thinks it's clever. Up past a little bit. Let's try shooting the thug. Ah, I'm gonna hold for one turn here. Let's move Torko up. Try to headshot him just to make this go a little quicker. Ooh, we can run Karsten all the way up here against that brigand. That's really good. Um, yes, let's put a lot of pressure on. This guy with the dagger will be kind of annoying. Emperor's one of my expendable characters. Maybe we just move up and like hit him. That actually seems like the best move. Yep, this is causing some more morale problems. Thorsman will move up here. Wolfram, let's start with a nice hit, uh, hit to the head. Oh, that guy with the dagger gets to move again? That's nasty. Um, the guy with the flail. <laughs> We'll just hack him to death. I have the dagger keeps missing, which is very good. Uh, 
Now, if we can catch that poacher, that would be a decent result. How would we catch the poacher? Oh, right. Thor's minis just swapped. Uh, I totally did not see that. It's my fault. We don't really need to shoot with a crossbow. Um, they're both like lashing the head or hitting the body is the same, and this guy actually has uh, head headshots do more damage anyway. Yeah, good. Now let's see, Wolfram, if he adrenalines, can he cap? He can't actually catch up to the brigand, unfortunately. He doesn't have Pathfinder, does he? No, that's because he has to get up the hill and then down. He can't do that. It's uh, sad. Thug is almost dead. He is dead. And this guy has a knife. I actually want the knife. Some of my characters can actually move ahead of the uh, brigand. That's surprising. Yeah, my high initiative character can do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to catch him. That's sad, but... But that's okay. So let's just see if there's any chance. One, two, three, four. Nope. One, two, three, four. Nope. Ah, uh, the hill stopped my adrenaline from being uh, useful here. I'm not gonna bother hunting down this brigand. I don't like to do it. It's kind of tedious, and he's probably gonna run anyway. We did get a knife, and I need knives. Plus, we're gonna get paid. Huh? Interesting. So there's um, uh, uh, someone who wants to offer me 370 crowns. There's only 70 more crowns. That's really not very much. Um, I've seen these offers be like really good offers once you get better renown. I've seen them like triple the pay from the town and that was so tempting. Uh, if it's like, but I'm not gonna break my word with the town because I want to build up the reputation. You take a very significant reputation hit if you break the, your word. So I, in these towns we wanted to, um, we want to get experience on. So there are some Noxers there. Uh, I still like to call them ghouls. I can't. I don't really know how to pronounce this word, but ghouls. That's what they used to be called. Uh, Thorsman the Corporal plus four resolve. Very good. That's exactly what we want. Huh. This is an interesting level. All of his rows are really good, actually. Um, he needs to go fortified mine. And then next turn he can get rallied to troops. So we have a sergeant. Um, but before that, Herberold here is going to be an expendable uh, brother. So some melee, sure, why not? Some melee defense, why not? A bit extra fatigue. So you can take a hit or two. How do I usually build out the more expendable brothers? I want to build them out with abilities to tank for us. Um, hold out. <laughs> Might not actually be the worst. But I feel like Colossus is a better tanking perk. Um, Gifted is actually also something I should really consider. I actually think I will take Gifted on this character because he's expendable. And we could use some good rows. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's go with Gifted. I want to use a Gifted row to buff the um, Stats I would normally not get, basically things I don't have starsing. Um, 
so I want to be able to use that to max roll. Yep, that looks good. You actually don't want too many defenses on your tank, because uh, otherwise, how are they going to like tank for you? Uh, the enemy will actually hit weaker targets. Looks like I actually gave Herbworld a lot of extra defense, but that's okay. I plan on taking advantage of the Tom perk. I almost never used that before, but let's experiment with that with a dedicated uh, sort of expendable tank. So next level he can get Taunt, and uh, then the high defenses will come into play. So Bertram the Derelict is my most interesting brother. I've never gotten a brother quite like him before. Range skill, obviously, because we want to make him an archer. Range defense, that was a max roll. I think he just needs more like resolve. 29 is horrific, even on an archer. You need like some resolve. And his points are pathetic too, but um, on archers, I often like to do initiative build, but this particular archer, Bertram, I don't think we can do the initiative build. You just don't have the stat points for it. Like, you don't have stars. You start with 100 initiative, which is not very good. Um, so I'm not going to make this into a high initiative archer. He could still be really good, though. Oh, not, not fatigue. I wanted uh, resolve. Initiative archers is only one type of build. You don't have to do that. And fast adaptation, I love it on any archers I'm going to make into a bowman. A crossbowman can benefit a lot from crippling strike. But with his three stars in range, I think he can become a bowman. Fast adaptation works really well. So if he's going to become a bowman, let's give him the short bow. Swap out the crossbow on Hugo. Thor has been the corporal, right? We've already given him um, Fortified Mind. He's just got really good rows this level. Um, I think Resolve, uh, you have to pick. Like, plus three to range defense is incredible. Um, he has a star in there, though. It's not as critical. We do need a bit more fatigue. And then the question is, do we up range skill or do we up melee skill? And this range skill is just a typical roll. The melee skill, though, is a max roll. And I feel like he might actually use his melee from time to time. This is going to be a sort of a hybrid character I'm foreseeing. With a crossbow, you could get by when you're shooting, like, semi-point blank with 60. Oh, 60 is low, but 70-ish is, is good. Um... And you do need some melee skill with your battle standard. Like, that battle standard doesn't do the most damage, but it does some damage. So we'll take the max roll there. This is going to be a very odd hybrid type character. I don't know if I'm going to ultimately like this build. But, you know, it's great to experiment around, I feel like, at the beginning of a campaign. Let's go murder these ghouls. There's only five of them. It should be easy experience. Come on, how are they moving so fast? Oh, the militia is fighting them. I mean, we can get in there and uh, get a small amount of experience with doing that. Sure, why not? I don't like this just because we're going to start at like the bottom of the map here. And by the time we rush up to kill the Noxers, um, chances are the militia will have already murdered all of them. And I don't think you get experience unless you actually, like, land the kills. So this is a bit of a waste of time. But, uh, you know, we need more experience early game. He's militia. No shields, no helmets. They're not going to do well. Even against Noxers, which are ghouls, which are not the toughest of enemies. Okay, they've actually killed one of the militia. Okay, now the militia has done a bit more damage. is 
breaking. Oh, this is disappointing. I wanted to fight the ghouls. Normally, you like are so happy that you get allies in a fight, but this is one of those few instances where um, where you wouldn't. When the fight's too easy and the allies actually get in the way. But normally you want to do fights with allies. You can sneak in there and pick off like a uh, uh, enemy or two. Uh, especially against bandit raiders early on. It's amazing. Uh, did someone else die? I don't know. Uh, there's, oh, there's this Noxer is uh, actually confident. Shouldn't be confident for long. Uh, there's too many men here. They're just clogging up the uh, the, the battlefield. I don't just want to shoot blindly into the militia, even though I could. I don't think you actually receive a penalty for doing that, but it feels so bad. They're not afraid to shoot into their own men, though. That's their prerogative. This was a total waste of time. Too bad there's not like an autocomplete, I think. It would be nice to have autocompletes once the uh, battles get to this sort of situation where there's basically no point in uh, continuing the battle. Yeah, I'm not gonna shoot blindly. Killing one of the Noxers or ghouls should lower the morale of the remaining ones. We didn't even get a single hitting, so we got no experience from this. It was a total waste of time. I thought it might be, but I guess I was optimistic. Um, if we adrenaline, we no, we still can't do anything. <laughs> I'm just gonna like pass my turn with all the rest of my brothers because there's no point. Yeah. Well, there's a total waste of time. We don't get anything, we don't get any experience, I don't think. Oh well. Let's get paid. 300 crowns, which is very good. Any tavern rumors? Um, Krakendorf, right. There is good money to be made there. Let's check out the recruits. Interesting lot. The only person here who looks interesting is Dirk the Bull. Not that we have money to afford him, but Squires can be pretty good. And the Bull is a positive uh, title, but we can't afford him. Squires actually make surprisingly good sergeants. They, I think, naturally have good resolve. Ah, the prices in this town are much better. I like this. Let's sell off some of the stuff we don't need. Don't need this many extra shields. Don't need all this extra armor. Um, what are the prices like here? Ooh, we can sell the quality wood off for a bit of extra money. Prices are absurdly high right now, like crazy, crazy high. That's very unfortunate. As I suspected, this game, we're not going to be able to make that much profit off trading. I should equip the knife on one of my uh, men in the front here. But otherwise, 
Like, I'm not really seeing myself going back to using the spears now that we have tier 2 weapons. So I'm going to sell off the Militia Spear. If we get a few more Boar Spears, I'll keep those around. Do I want the Short Bow? Not really. I don't even have arrows for it. I want to keep around an extra flail. You never know when that come, might come in handy. I want to keep around the falcon. Um, you never know when those would come in handy. There are fights where, well, having the cutting weapons are good. Yeah, let's keep those around. I want to keep around the mace because you never know when you can run into more undead against whom you want maces. Uh, made a decent chunk of money. Let's see, what's this contract? Um, Hemomark? Didn't I just come from there? Oh no, Hello Mark is this town, right? Okay, Salt Haven. Where is Salt Haven? How many crowns are we talking about? It's not a lot, so it's nearby. Deliver cargo to Salt Haven in the east. Uh, I'll obviously need a bit of time to think about this. Am I going in the direction of Salt Haven? I think I am, right? If it was like Krakendorf, I would have immediately taken it. Yeah, Salt Haven is there. Krakendorf is also very nearby. It's a small town with amber. Salt Haven is a town with amber. You could buy the amber, sell the amber for a good price at Hemelmark. Yeah, seems, uh, seems like a good choice. Let's do that. We can't buy the wool. It's too expensive right now, and we're not going to fetch a good price. The small towns, very unfortunate. And the tools here are so expensive, we need to get cheaper tools. And there's a tempo here, that's good. We might need it. So I think this is a good point to pause the game. Thank you for watching. Until next time.